Hello and welcome to this 24th episode of Living Off the Grid in the City. Again, Hector Vladimir. Today is the 17th of December 2015, almost the end of this wonderful year, 2015. I hope you have had a very productive, off the grid, efficient, sustainable, and independent year. And hope to have brought some information to light that you may have not known and hope to have encouraged you, enticed you, and inspired you not only to get off the grid but also to educate others to do the same and to pass down the word of all the benefits of doing this also all the disadvantages of not doing so this show is a very special show because it touches on a few very deep issues consequences and some very profound and exciting prospects which may be a result or a consequence of the widespread adoption of living off the grid if the practice and methodology mindset of living off the grid is ever widespread there will be very likely a variety of consequences a variety of domino effects and very reverberating implications that are likely to occur Again, if this is a widespread and accepted way of life, there are many benefits to be reaped from such practice as living off the grid, as I have mentioned many throughout the last many shows, and not the least being the empowerment of people, the empowerment of society and the whole world. This is a very deep and far-reaching prospect of having most not all but most people out there with much higher knowledge about their environment themselves and a much more empowered individual will likely be more abundant if not be the majority i am very confident that adopting such practice as living off the grid will bring about change economically socially and in many other areas socially it will bring about change because if people become much more self-sustained and more capable and skillful and knowledgeable. Of course, many of the ills of today's society, such as crime, envy, pettyism, jealousy, hatred, racism, social class prejudice, nationality prejudice, and even conflict will likely be minimized, perhaps almost eradicated. And by empowering people and basically having people be much more informed, educated, capable of thinking outside of the box, be more creative, more problem solving. If this is spread to the point that it's the majority of people that think this way, the consequences are tremendous and awesome prospects. Many industries will change dramatically. Many of the accepted and high regarded professions of today will be basically in shambles, will be rejected and hardly accepted or practiced. Many of what I call the abominations of today, such as entertainment, professional sports, media, the profession of acting and pretending, and professions that are basically not essential and that serve the petty and very pathetic industries of today, such as finance, advertising, Those will be, hopefully, and very likely phased out eventually, and very gradually, in my estimation. And these are only some of the very far-reaching consequences and changes that are likely, in my mind, to come about if there is a widespread acceptance and application of self-reliance and care for the environment, care for one another, care for the individual as humans, and also animals, and the place where you live. These and many other of the advantages and consequences and implications of living off the grid on a widespread scale are the few topics that I'm going to discuss today. I will also touch on the future consequences and implications of living off the grid in the next few years, few decades, few centuries. I will attempt to more or less predict or envision what it'd be like in the future if such practice as self-sustainability and care for the environment and one another and independence were to take hold. If these practices were to take hold, what would it be of us as a human species, as a society, as a community, as individuals in the future? From a few years to hundreds or thousands of years into the future, what would it be? I will touch upon these very speculative points 
and areas, so let's begin. I believe there will be a more powerful individual, more powerful society, and by that I mean that people in general will be more skillful, more educated, more capable, more trained, more aware of their surroundings, more aware of their environment, and the many skills necessary to survive, not only to survive, but to thrive and advance. Also, people will be more aware of issues and problems and will be more problem solvers. There will be more of them and much more capable to solve problems. Those, again, are a consequence that I believe will come about from the widespread use of living off the grid. Also, there will be more problem solvers that will tackle problems in many different areas. These areas that need problem solvers include the medical field, for example, for diseases, terminal diseases, and long-term or permanent diseases, the ones without a cure as of yet. Also, the field of engineering will vastly improve and be benefited by these problem-solving individuals, which there will be much more of them. Better engineering will contribute to better disaster prevention, less homelessness, since more homes will likely be constructed and better and more efficient homes. Production will increase most likely since individuals will be more resourceful. Machinery and automation will increase much more. There will be, in the same token, abundance of many items and goods which will aid society as a whole. So let's go into a little more details into some of these advantages or consequences of the widespread use of living off the grid. First, in social terms, society will benefit greatly from less working hours. This is a very, very important benefit that I believe will come about. Less working hours as far as human labor will be required in part as a result of automation or widespread automation. Not so much like automation is now, where only the very advanced countries own a lot of the automation, but automation will be widespread worldwide, and every single factory and every single industry will be impacted by automation. This, again, is my prediction, my estimation, and only a likelihood. Do not believe that this is etched in stone or is an accurate prediction of the future. This is just an estimated and very educated guess of what the future may be like welfare may be much more available and better, less corrupt and more equitable and fair. That is, the welfare services are providing basic needs, foods, health care, shelter and substance funds as long as they need it. Also a consequence I believe to be less abuse and less deprivation. How is that so? How can living off the grid and being self-sustained, self-reliant lead to less abuse and less deprivation. Well, a lot of it boils down to having more time to being more knowledgeable, being more aware, being more caring for the environment and others, and also having less working hours, labor during the week, thus freeing a lot of time for individuals to problem solve or to contribute to problems in society. And when you have this, I believe, there is a domino effect of consequences and changes and abuse and deprivation will find less of a niche, less of a home for them to exist because people will have more time and there will be a firestorm of people, human rights watchers, vulnerable people watchers and people that are just there ready to respond to any kind of abuse and deprivation and any other kind of maltreatment. In the same token, there will be most likely less prejudice and discrimination since, again, there will be many more people involved in the prevention of such horrendous and abhorrent practice. A lot of the advantages and good consequences of living off the grid in the future will come from the fact that people will have more time for doing non-work tasks. They will not have their hands tied, their attention taken 100% by work during the week. And if this happens, people, I believe, they won't just sit down and watch TV or take naps all day long. This is far from the truth, and there has been many studies that prove this, that people will find things to do and find ways to improve themselves, society, their surroundings, in turn, improving society as a whole. Again, more problem-solving individuals with more time to problem-solve. 
that is the key for the repertoire of advantages and benefits that may come from being off the grid. Public health will also benefit from long-term benefits of living off the grid, less homelessness, believe it or not, may be most likely a very real consequence. This is because there will be again more problem solvers and they most likely will see a problem with homelessness and lo and behold these people will volunteer time and resources to build more homes. Rent free or mortgage free homes will very likely eradicate, maybe not 100%, but at least 90 or better percent will eradicate homelessness. There are enough, as Jack Fresco from the Venus Project says, there are enough resources to do this and more to end homelessness and many other of today's ills. Also, less hunger. It is one of the benefits of widespread use of living off the grid, to my estimation. And again, having to do with people being more capable and more able to solve problems and work on production of food to end hunger, not only here in the Americas, but all over the world, in Africa, Asia, and Europe, and other regions or continents. Food production will very much improve, again, due to automation, as more and more individuals find methods and ways to do more. And this all comes also from being able to be self-sustained and as efficient as possible. This way of thinking will likely generate more engineers, doctors, scientists, researchers, builders, makers, manufacturers, you name it. All of these professions will likely increase by many fold, especially since there will be a less dependence on the monetary drive. If people are not so much driven by the amount of money they will make, but for the good that they will do, I believe this is a key ingredient for a certain profession or a certain group to basically exponentially grow. Also there will be most likely less poverty and when I speak of poverty I speak of poverty of basic needs like hunger, shelter, clothing, health needs, health care. All of these things will be met for the most part in my estimation by every community for every individual because of the raised level of awareness and raised level of problem solving and resources which will be freed and suddenly made available by this new way of life. Resources in human power and also material resources. There will also likely be less abhorrent behavior as again Jack Fresco has put in many of his interviews. Less abhorrent behavior such as alcoholism, drug abuse, smoking and any of the other behaviors such as stealing, violence, corruption, greed. All of these behaviors will most likely be less abundant, very likely as a result of the higher level of awareness, care and mindset of being part of people that live off the grid. To live off the grid, you need to have a mindset that is well apart from the everyday run-of-the-mill mindset that exists today. You need to focus, you need to become a wholesome person as far as having many skills and knowledge. This requires you to forget all of the nonsense and pettiness of everyday life, such as TV shows, movie stars, sports, sports addiction, such as following sports teams and games, drug abuse, alcoholism, smoking, gossip, all of these petty things will have to be forgotten, faced out for people to become better at being self-sustained. As a result of that, demand for all of these petty things will very dramatically decrease and even eradicate in some cases and for that a very large amount of ripple effect consequences will come about as a result of the lower demand or non-demand of such hideous and dumb practices. Engineering will take much benefits also by the building of more homes as I mentioned and also the building of smarter homes. Smarter homes will come as a result of smarter individuals of course and demand for smarter and better homes from more aware and more demanding and more conscious individuals. People that are just looking for a big, shiny, new-looking home 
and have their heads in the cloud thinking about what they just saw on HGTV or the home improvement show, mega cribs, or all the rich and famous cribs and houses and mansions. If people go looking for a house with this mentality, I mean, that has profound consequences. I mean, you will be looking for homes that are just fluff and looks and fancy detail and entrances and not so much the innards of the home, the workings of the home, the automation of it. How efficient is it? How much energy can you produce and save with this home? Is it built as smartly as possible with as much engineering as possible? with safety and growth and future and weather in mind, disaster events in mind. To my opinion, most people don't think like this. To my knowledge, in today's society, most people just want that detail, that stone in their front, the brickwork. They want that nice door. They want to feel comfortable with a nice big AC. They look very much at the size of the home, the size of their garage, the size of their yard, and very little thought is put to the other things that are actually important. So smarter folks will demand smarter homes as a result of living off the grid and the many benefits that living off the grid will bring about very likely. Also better cities in turn. This is a ripple effect, a domino effect. Better homes will lead to better cities, better communities and better even nations because everything is tied together. If you demand smarter single unit homes, the city itself will be most likely smarter, the state and so on. And this is again a ripple effect that will just grow out from the center. For example, smarter roads, smarter buildings, commercial, educational, recreational, smarter bridges and tunnels and transportation systems will be smarter and more evolved. The products for every type of use will be most likely also smarter. And on that same train of thoughts, AI, artificial intelligence, will take more hold and perhaps reach unthought of and unfathomable levels. Computers may reach heights never even imagined in today's society and will likely contribute or even take over automation. How welcoming would that be where computers and robotics can just decide on its own that it will take the petty, monotonous and meager, dirty, hard jobs from humans and just begin performing this work on their own. And from there, who knows what may come? Who knows what advance and the rate of advance may come from that? It may just be a point where it just takes off to where humans may not even be able to keep up with the rapid advance, the rapid rate of advance. And eventually we may become, who knows, even ousted by machines and put aside from machines to basically keep up our world, perhaps even better than we are keeping up with our world today. But that, again, is a speculation and just very far away possibilities. However, they are possibilities and they are very much likely in my mind. Economics will also benefit very likely. There will be less dependence or no dependence for that matter on money or any other type of credit or valuable material or notes or any kind of bondage to such note like money. I believe, just to take a side note here, that on very large part, society is in bondage. Most of this bondage, I believe, is of the economic type. Yes, there is very little slavery or physical bondage of humans and people working against their will. But what has taken its place, in my mind, is this economic bondage. Many people that I've known and read about, and even people that I don't know, are victims of this bondage. Some call it wage slavery. And it's just another way of keeping someone doing work, a lot of times work that they do not enjoy and rather not do. They keep doing this work for a company or an individual or entity keeps people doing this work or job against their will only because they know they need the money, only because of the necessity or apparent quote unquote necessity of money. A lot of people hate their jobs, hate what they do, but yet they keep doing it as long as they can with the hopes of getting enough money to maybe one day buy their freedom. Buy their freedom. And finally do what they like or stop working altogether. This is a dream of many, 
where people can spend lifetimes and whole careers doing something they do not enjoy only for the sake of making money and getting a retirement. Maybe. This is the full definition of slavery in my mind, in my view, to my estimation. A advantage and a awesome prospect of future consequences of living off the grid is that if you live off the grid, you are taking a stance against the way things work, meaning that you're going in the opposite from the norm. Most people, a very large percentage of people at the very least, work to make more money. They go to school, train, they attempt daily to get better just so they can earn more money so they can do more in life and help others and buy the things they need and want. Living off the grid has the opposite mentality, the opposite philosophy. It has the philosophy of going the opposite direction as far as using money and minimizing the need for money. Instead of getting better to make more money, living off the grid and its philosophy attempts to get better to minimize the value and need of money and be more self-reliant and be more dependent on yourself, be more dependent on actual resources, more dependent on actual technology and skill and knowledge and not money, which is, by the way, an outside source. It is part of the grid, part of the very often mentioned grid that I have brought up here in this show. Dependence on money can be and is addictive, just as TV services and electric power services and any of the other utility services that you so much depend on. Dependence on money is just as harmful as dependence on any other artificial service. Why is this so? Well, very simply put, the minute money loses value, which has many times throughout history, all of your capability, all of your power, all of your potential disappears and vanishes in as short as the blink of an eye. So do we really want to risk it all and to be so dependent on the value of money and the existence of the government that backs up this money to put our lives, our safety, our knowledge and all of our energies on this one basket of eggs? Because in reality that is what we're doing. We're risking it all putting all of our efforts, heartbeats, time, knowledge, all of the duress, all of the sacrifices, time away from family, time away from friends, time away from people that need to visit, sick people, time that you could have given to the poor, time that you could have given to the sick, time for yourself, to teach others, to love others. Is it worth it to put all of these things, all of these very rare and cherished and dear resources, is it worth it to put it in this one basket of eggs called the monetary system? And with that, I leave you with plenty to think about, plenty food for thoughts, because, again, living off the grid and the methodology and philosophy that comes along with it goes against the conventional wisdom of using and valuing material things and money and gives the power to the individual, takes the power away from money and material and dependence on artificial providers and gets that power back to the hands of the people, takes that power, that value and gives it to each and every individual and puts it in their hands and once again gives individuals their time, their power, their resources and more than anything their freedom to do as they see fit to make the world a better place let's not give all of our power all of our freedom all of these things i just mentioned resources sacrifices time away from family and friends let's not give these things to the very few at the top to do with those as they like and keep the rest of us busy at each and every factory restaurant hotel retail store dealership and doing every other petty and monotonous and boring and dirty and hard job out there and let's give all of those resources i mentioned back to the masses and we'll see millions of beethovens 
millions of Einsteins, of Nikola Teslas, of Leonardo da Vinci's, of Martin Luther King's, of Carl Sagan's, Bach's, Mahatma Gandhi's, and Tsiolkovsky's, millions of Nelson Mandela's, Picasso's, and Rembrandt's, Plato's. You catch my drift. So let's make millions of very special people. Let's just not keep the environment, the resources, and everything around us. So those very special individuals only happen once in a lifetime, once a century, once every thousand years. Let's make them most of us. Let's make them the majority. And I believe very dearly and very confidently that one way, not the only way, but one way of doing this is to put all these resources and power back to the people, back to the masses, to us, the majority. So back to my point of the many benefits of such practice as getting off the grid and all the philosophy that comes with it. Energy. No fee for energy. No fee for energy. Energy will be, in my mind, so abundant that there will be no need to charge or charge anyone for it. Energy will most likely be very renewable. Again, it will be in the hands of the people, in the hands of most just like computers are today, just like cell phone use is today, washing your clothes is today, is in your hands. Why not energy? What is the difference? What is the major difference about energy, which is so easy and so simple, so straightforward to harness and use, especially now with the many technologies that are ready for the people, for the masses. So no fee for energy is a huge and monstrous, monstrous advantage and benefits of living off the grid. Less waste and more efficiency with energy, with the energy we produce and use, mainly coming from the very fact that we own it and that we use it. We use what we create, what we produce. So of course it's self-inherent. It is built in the system that efficiency will improve dramatically and keep improving because People naturally want to improve and make their lives better, easier, more efficient, and more productive. So this, of course, will likely transfer to energy production and use more energy sources again through higher research. Again, higher research comes from more capable individuals and a higher number of capable individuals. More renewable energies again. Who knows, we will discover most likely many more energy taps, sources of energy, that is many of which may be renewable. We may finally unlock the secret of fusion, which is energy through plasma mechanisms or the fusion or the putting together of atoms to create a tremendous amount of virtually unlimited energy. Again, governments are coming together to finally research this very promising and awesome prospect of fusion energy. Again, to be different from fission energy, which is today's reality when it comes to nuclear energy, sometimes popularly known as fusion is different, is the energy basically that is generated in the mechanisms of stars like the sun. Another benefit may be the eradication of fossil fuel use. As Neil deGrasse Tyson mentioned in his latest Cosmos series of 2014, there may be a day finally that comes where the last gas or internal combustion automobile is placed in a city museum just as a historical artifact. When that day comes, it will be a time to celebrate. And let us announce at that point the entrance of the renewables and the widespread and popular use of renewable energies. They are here today, however, they are not by far popularly and very widely used, not nearly as much as they should be by now. The use of renewable energy to include solar PV, wind, geothermal, hydroelectric, and others have surged since 2015. Renewables accounted for 28% of electric generation in 2021, consisting of hydro, 55%, wind 23%, biomass 13%, solar 7%, and geothermal 1%. China produced 31% of global renewable electricity, followed by the United States at 11%, Brazil at 6.4%, Canada at 5.4%, and India at 3.9%. Renewable investment reached almost 500 billion globally in 2022. 
amounting to 83% of new electric capacity that year. The renewable energy industry employs almost 14 million people. Over the 10 years from 2010 to 2020, the solar PV industry grew from a niche technology struggling to hit its stride to a dominant source of new energy that fuels the U.S. economy with 242,000 jobs and reliably powering millions of homes and businesses. PV solar costs fell 70% between 2010 and 2020, making both rooftop and utility-scale solar generation competitive with other forms of electricity generation. In 2010, it cost about $40,000 to install an average residential solar system. Today, the cost averages about $18,000. At the beginning of 2010, in the U.S., there were a couple of dozen utility-scale solar plants primarily serving as pilot projects. In 2020, it topped 3,000 utility projects with prices at $18 to $35 per megawatt hour. This price decline has had the effect of boosting solar generation over 25 times in 10 years, from 0.1% of total U.S. electricity generation in 2010 to 2.5% in 2020. As of 2021, per data from the IRENA Arena, globally, renewable generation in gigawatt hours, or GWH, is led by China with 7,989,492. The U.S. is producing 2,444,538 gigawatt hours. Brazil generates 507,667 gigawatt hours. And Canada, India, Germany, Russia, and Japan all produce above 200,000 gigawatt hours. Norway, Spain, France, the United Kingdom, Turkey, Italy, Sweden, and Vietnam produce above 100,000 gigawatt hours. Emissions-free technologies such as electric vehicles, EVs, have become a popular and rival technology to the internal combustion vehicle. As of 2022, global annual sales of EVs are dominated by China since 2015, followed by Europe and the US. As of 2022, EV ownership topped 27% in Norway, 16% in Iceland, and 8.8% in Sweden. Denmark, the Netherlands, Finland, China, and Germany all have over 4% EV adoption. The Tesla Model Y became the best-selling personal vehicle in the world for the year 2023. So the world has come a long way in renewable energy technologies since 2015, but I believe we have a lot of ground to gain ahead of us. The U.S. has a wimpy EV ownership of less than 2%, and U.S. residential solar installations have been on the decline since 2016. For example, the state of Georgia, the USA, produces a whopping 6.1% of its energy from PV solar, of which only 0.1% is generated from residential PV, the rest is utility scale. While California's 27% of overall PV generation, 6.7% comes from residential PV. So the trend is disturbing in that big utility companies are gobbling up the overwhelming share of the PV production in the US. And with that, my friends, the show, Living Off the Grid in the City, I have put, for the first time, 24 recordings together, discussing many of the disadvantages of being part of the grid, the advantages of being off the grid, and the many advantages of the philosophy that comes together. They are inseparable. The philosophies come together with the practice and the action of Living Off the Grid. There are two sides of one coin. Very simply put, welcome to this new way of life. I hope with all the information I have shared with you, however simple and basic it may have been, and however mispronounced many of the words may have been, I hope to have changed your way of thinking, changed your perspective, and hopefully, if not now, in the near future, I hope to have changed your life. And if you have been touched and moved, by this show and all the information shared in it. Welcome to this new way of life, the way of life of self-reliance, courage, and change. Living off the grid, in the city, and any other place on earth and the universe. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please look for the next episode soon, and please ensure to share this with your friends and family. And please like this content and subscribe as a sign of support and for me to continue to provide this type of content to more people like you. 
Lastly, if you wish to support this content further, please visit the links provided in this publication. Thank you.